Hello there. Welcome to our active bystander training. Um, today we're going to look at the four D's of being an active bystander, which are to directly intervene, to delegate, to distract, and delay. We're going to spend time today specifically looking at how we would directly intervene, where we directly respond to the racism that's happening by naming it and naming what is happening. So our learning goals today are to review the four ways of intervening to end harassment, sexism, bullying, racism, homophobia, and transphobia, or any other harassment that you might be confronted with, um, that you'll be able to give examples of the two ways to interrupt directly when you do see harassment happening, and that you'll be able to describe what the bystander effect is and why we need to name it and overcome it. So here at the bus stop, we'll see how an active bystander intervenes in harassment and bullying. This active bystander will be directly intervening. So the four Ds of an active bystander are direct, distract, delay, or delegate. But we're going to spend time today on just that first one on direct. So in this picture, we have three people. The smallest boy is crying, and he's wearing a bow tie and a vest. The boy next to him is wearing a stocking cap and a, and a shirt with polka dots. And he, he is saying, hey, dweeb, where's my lunch money? The third person is a woman, and she's saying, I don't know. Should I interrupt? And the text on the slide says, why is it hard for our active bystander to decide to act? Give you a little bit of think time. So hopefully you came up with bystander effect. Bystander effect is what we talked about in the last presentation. The bystander effect is a very researched phenomenon where humans do not act because they think someone else will act or that to act would be invading someone's privacy. But in this situation, she is an adult, and these are two boys. One's maybe a teen, one's maybe 10 or 12. So she has the power here, so she is going to act directly. So the other question that our active bystander needs to act is, is it safe? What are the possible outcomes? So in this situation, she is an adult or adult seeming. And so she has a lot more power in the situation. So clearly it is safe for her to intervene. And the next choice is how should she intervene? And she choose to intervene directly. And there's two ways that you can intervene directly. You can use a three part statement, which is where you name the behavior, state its impact and state what behavior you want instead. So she is saying, what are you do what you are doing is bullying maybe you don't realize it but it is really hurtful in the future if you need money for lunch you can talk to the school so that is an example of the three part statement or she could also ask a question asking a question can make the perpetrator feel responsible for their own behavior so she is asking the older boy do you really need money or are you just being me? So now that you've seen those two interactions where our active bystander asks a question and uses a three-part three statement, uh, there's another scenario which you are going to look at and see, number one, what would you have to overcome and interrupt this scenario? And number two, how would you directly interrupt the situation? So in this picture, there's an older man standing in front of a receptionist desk and a nurse or a receptionist is standing there with a frown on her face. And the man is saying, I don't want a foreign doctor or a woman doctor. On the wall, there's a sign that says Dr. Ed Chan and Dr. Ann Lee. So the man is saying this in front of the receptionist and our active bystander, the same woman in the purple shirt, what would she be thinking? 
What does she have to overcome to interrupt this? And how would you directly interrupt this if you were this woman? I hope you've had time to think about that, and I am interested to hear what you would come up with. Look forward to hearing from you. To go over what our learning goals were, can you name the four ways of intervening to end harassment, sexism, bullying, racism, homophobia, and transphobia? Secondly, if you are interrupting directly, what are the two ways that you can skillfully act? And lastly, what is the bystander effect and why do we need to name it and overcome it? I hope that you can answer each one of these questions. If you have questions or want to share with me how you would have interrupted that racism and sexism in that picture of the doctor's office, I'd love to hear from you. My email is thompson.portland at gmail.com. T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N period. P O R T L A N D at gmail.com. Thank you so much.